Okay, let's dive in. It feels like um, you can't really go anywhere online or even just chat with friends lately yeah. without this big question coming up. Is AI going to take our jobs? Absolutely. It seems like every other week there's another huge leap, you know? AI, writing reports, making videos, stuff that felt purely human just, well, moments ago. Yeah. And it creates this uh, this real anxiety. You see it in Google searches. Things like AI unemployment are apparently hitting all-time highs. Mm -hmm. You hear people talking about it everywhere. London, San Francisco, probably everywhere in between. And that concern, it's understandable, right? The tech is powerful. The fear is that power means, you know, mass job losses are next. Exactly. But what does the data actually tell us right now? Mm. That's what we want to do in this deep dive. We're going to unpack some source material, leaning quite a bit on a recent Economist piece, just to see if the numbers we have actually support this idea of an imminent uh, AI jobs apocalypse. Right. Sort of cutting through the noise, the hype, and looking at what the information we actually have tells us about the here and now. Does the reality match the fear? Okay, so let's start with some of the claims. We hear pundits saying AI is already displacing workers. The source brings up um, a paper from Oxford, Frey and Yanis Paredes. Yeah, that one. It suggested a link, specifically looking at automation and maybe declining demand for translators. Okay, so an academic finding suggesting decline. But here's the kicker the source immediately points out. Official U.S. data, like actual employment numbers, show jobs in interpretation, translation, that kind of work. They're actually up 7% compared to last year. Wow. Okay, so 7% higher. Higher, yeah. So the study suggests one thing, but the real-world job numbers point the other way, at least for now. That's a pretty big disconnect right there. It really is. And, you know, look at Klarna, that fintech company. They made quite a bit of noise at first, didn't they, about using AI for customer service. Right. Sort of boasting about cutting down on human agents, the go-to example for AI replacing call centers. Precisely. But the source points out they've kind of done an about turn, is the phrase used. The CEO's now saying, reassuring people, that a human option will always be there. Hmm. So maybe the reality of replacing humans entirely wasn't quite as easy or maybe as effective as the initial hype suggested. That seems to be the implication. The real world rollout gets complicated. So, yeah, specific examples might feed the fear, but the actual data, how companies are really using it, it gets, well, messy, contradictory even. OK, so that brings us to looking at the bigger picture, right? The macroeconomic data. Is there any sign of this jobs crisis there? Yeah, the source digs into this. One measure they look at is um, the ratio of unemployment between recent college grads and the overall U.S. average. Right. Why focus specifically on young graduates? What's the theory there? Well, the idea is that new grads often go into those entry-level, knowledge-heavy jobs. You know, paralegals, maybe junior consultants making slides, basic report writing. The kind of tasks generative AI seems pretty good at, or at least getting good at. Exactly. So the hypothesis is... If AI is taking jobs, maybe you'd see the impact first in this group. They could be the uh, the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. Makes sense. So what did the data show for them? Was the canary singing a warning? Well, this is where it gets really interesting, according to the source. The data doesn't quite fit the AI narrative. Their relative unemployment, so how their rate compares to the average, it did go up. Look. But that trend started way back, around 2009. 2009, That's seriously. That's ages before ChatGPT and this whole generative AI wave hit the mainstream. Exactly. Like well over a decade before. And on top of that, their actual unemployment rate today, it's still pretty low, around 4%. So even if they're doing slightly worse relative to the average, that started long ago, and their absolute job situation is still quite good, hmm. doesn't really scream AI displacement crisis. Not based on that data point, no. So the source looked elsewhere, too. They mentioned a measure the economists started chatting last year in 2023. It focuses on white-collar employees. And how do they define white-collar in this context? Is it broad? Yeah, quite broad. The source mentions people in things like back office support, financial operations, sales roles. You know, the classic office jobs often flagged as being vulnerable to AI. OK, a big chunk of the workforce. And what's the trend been for that group? Again, according to the source, no real sign of an AI hit. Actually, the opposite. The share of total U.S. employment that falls into this white-collar category, it's actually gone up slightly in the past year. Up slightly. Wow. That really does run counter to the idea that AI is just carving through office jobs right now. You'd expect that share to be shrinking, wouldn't you? You absolutely would if the common narrative was playing out in the numbers. And then if you zoom out even further, the source paints this broader economic picture that makes the whole AI jobs apocalypse idea seem, 
well, difficult to square with the current reality. Okay, tell us about that wider context. Well, first off, the overall U.S. unemployment rate is still low, 4.2%, and wage growth, still pretty strong, reasonable strong anyway. And strong wage growth. That usually signals healthy demand for workers, doesn't it? Not some huge surplus of people being replaced by machines. Exactly right. If AI was causing mass displacement, you'd expect wages to flatten out or even fall because there'd be too many people looking for too few jobs. The fact wages are still rising nicely is, well, it's hard to fit with that displacement story right now. And this isn't just happening in the U.S., is it? The source mentioned international trends. Yeah, it points in a similar direction elsewhere. Strong earnings growth reported in Britain, the euro area, Japan, too. And here's a really eye-opening statistic the source highlights. In 2024, the employment rate across the OECD, you know, the Club of Rich Countries, it hit an all-time high. An all-time high employment rate across the world's developed economy. That's and that certainly doesn't sound like AI is triggering a global jobs meltdown. It definitely complicates the narrative, oh. which raises the big question the source tackles. If the data isn't showing this widespread job loss, despite AI getting better and better, and despite all the fear, why not? What's going on? Okay, so the source offers a couple of possible explanations for this gap between the fear and the figures. What's the first one? The first is pretty straightforward, maybe even a bit anticlimactic. It's just that despite all the buzz, maybe not that many companies are actually using AI for serious core business tasks at scale yet. So lots of talk, lots of experiments, maybe some pilot programs, but not deep widespread integration that would actually replace lots of people. That's the idea. The source actually cites an official stat Less than 10% of American firms report using AI to actually produce goods and services. So the tech might be powerful in theory, but its actual deployment might still be pretty limited in practice. Okay, so low adoption is one possibility. What's the other explanation the source puts forward? The second idea is that, well, even when companies do bring AI in, they aren't necessarily firing people. Instead, the source suggests the AI might just be helping existing workers do their jobs faster more efficiently. Ah, so it's augmenting their abilities, making them more productive rather than making them redundant. Exactly. Acting as a tool to assist humans, not replace them outright. The source uses that phrasing. Augmenting rather than replacing them. So maybe companies are getting more output with the same staff, or perhaps shifting people to do different, maybe higher value tasks, instead of just showing them the door. That's the essence of the augmentation argument. And you know, the source kind of sums it all up pretty clearly. Whichever explanation is closer to the truth, maybe it's low adoption, maybe it's augmentation, maybe a mix. The bottom line is, quote, for now, there is no need to panic. Okay, so let's quickly recap what we've pulled from the source material in this deep dive. While AI is definitely getting more capable and the concerns about jobs are, well, they're real and understandable. The actual data we have right now, whether it's specific jobs like translators or the big picture like overall unemployment, wage growth, even those record high international employment rates, it just doesn't seem to back up the story of a massive jobs crisis or an imminent AI-driven jobs apocalypse, not yet anyway. And the reasons why, according to the source, could be that either you know companies aren't really using AI that much for core tasks yet, or when they do, it's acting more like a helper augmenting workers, not replacing them wholesale. Yeah, it seems the reality on the ground reflected in the current numbers is just a lot more nuanced, maybe less dramatic than the headlines often suggest. It certainly seems that way for now. But that second explanation, the augmentation one, it does leave us with a thought, doesn't it? Something maybe for you, the listener, to consider based on the source. If AI is primarily augmenting workers now, making them faster, more productive, what happens down the line? How might that eventually change the kind of jobs available or even the total demand for human work once that augmentation effect really scales up or hits a certain point? That's a really interesting question to keep chewing on as this tech keeps evolving. Where does that road lead? 